Okay, this is a video about these uh, carburetor float needles. Uh, go bad on a lot of small carburetors. Uh, you'll see a lot of people on eBay selling these things. You'll note this one has oh, a few marks here on this pointed cone. But something I discovered is the real problem I think is in the seat, not in the needle. And I've tried this method on five carburetors now and it's worked every single time. And I've never had to buy a new needle. Even though the needles aren't perfect, I suppose I could figure a way to put that in the lathe and polish it up a little bit. But uh, I don't think that's necessary. I think the reason that they leak, although it's just theory, I can't promise for sure what changes this, but I think that the, the seat, this hole down in these things here, uh, the seats maybe the hole gets a little out of round uh, or distorted. Uh, obviously it's just an edge that seals on this needle and for some reason I think that's not round anymore. So what I did to fix it was to buy a little steel ball like this. You can buy a lot of them. You'll see these packages. I got all these packages together. There's, I don't know, he gave me maybe eight or ten little steel balls in each one of various sizes. It cost me four dollars at the local bearing shop to buy these. And I hit the ball with a punch like this. In this case I'm using a brass punch here. But uh, you want to have something that's not too tight in the hole so that you can be sure that you're hitting that ball right square in the center. You want the ball to sit on the little hole down in the bottom. And what that's going to do is peen that hole and like I say, I can't tell anybody a real reason why this works, but I've just found that it does. I did it as an act of desperation, uh, thinking I was going to have to buy a new carburetor body. These here, these are Makuni carburetors, and this seat could be removed. Uh, but the carburetor that I was working on at the time, you couldn't take the seat out of there. And I thought, well, I'd have to make something to try to remachine the seat down in there or something like that. And or else just put on a new carburetor body and I as an act of desperation I thought well I'll get a steel ball I found one of these balls in my drawer and I said I'm gonna put that in there and smack it and see what that would do and by George that fixed it and like I say I've done five carburetors so far this using this method and it does work so I just can't tell you why obviously the ball does not uh, give you a configuration uh, like the point on the on the needle, it's it's going to give you a round, and it doesn't match this point at all. I mean, I you know you can lap them with toothpaste, and there's a lot of different things you can do to to get the needle to sit right and seal in the seat. But some of the seats are really out of whack, and they leak quite a bit. This one particularly does. This this motorcycle has about thirty thousand miles on it, and uh, you know if you don't remember to shut off the gas it'll give you problems. Uh, the problems it'll cause will be flooding of course, you can't get the motorcycle started. Uh, the crankcase could fill up with uh, gasoline. Uh, they used to have little drain plugs in the crankcase on two cycle engines uh, but they quit doing that in their early 60s I guess. That was quite convenient if it was really flooded that bad you could take the plug out and clear the flood out of the crankcase but Usually my method is you just got to push the thing for a while until you get it started. Then it might take it a minute or so before it finally cleans all that gas out of the crankcase. So The other problem it can cause is if it's leaking more gasoline, particularly at an idle when it's only using a little bit of gas, it can be flooding a little bit and therefore your idle will go way, way rich and it won't idle right simply because the float needle is leaking uh, gasoline past it. Uh, more gasoline's getting past it than what the engine's burning at the time because it's just idling and that can mess you up your mixture so that's another thing that can happen so uh, anyways I'm going to show you how I went about doing this and discovered that this works okay what I have here now you can see I've just placed a fuel line onto the carburetor put the needle down into the seat 
and I have a, over a bucket of water, it's just a plain household bucket of clear water. I submerge this thing. This is the way I test them to make sure that the needle seals. And when I blow in the end of the fuel line, you'll see bubbles come up out of the out of the needle. Now if I hold the needle down with my finger, I hope you can see that. There's air bubbles coming out past that needle. Okay, that shows that it's leaking. Also, by doing this test, you can check the the gasket around the, the seat to make sure that that's tight. Sometimes gasoline can leak past the seat if you have a removable seat like this, but uh, if somebody puts them in with Loctite and stuff, they're not apt to come loose and leak, but it's something that, you, that this test would catch. So now I'm going to sh show you what happens when I use the steel ball and just hit the bottom of the seat with it. Now, you'll notice that this this needle, it does have a few marks on the seat, but I don't see any grooves or anything like that that would be really detrimental to the thing sealing. There's a, a wear spot on it. It might be it's hard chrome plated on the end of that thing. But it's not perfect. The needle isn't perfect. However, I'm going to use the steel ball which like I say I got a whole bunch of them in different sizes at the local bearing shop you want to use real steel ball bearings don't use a soft one or use brass or something like that it has to be a ball for a ball bearing which they sell loose balls at the bearing shop and like I say I got about maybe 30 of these things for about four dollars at the bearing shop they're not very expensive they're fairly cheap I found eight inches about the ideal size for this, which is yeah, about three millimeters, something like that. This little steel ball, uh, but you can get various sizes, which wouldn't be a bad idea till you find out which one fits pretty good down in there. I drop this down in the hole, and I do, I do want to tell you that down in the bottom of the seat, looking with my naked eyes, I can't tell what this does at all. It, that it does much of anything, but I drop the steel ball in there and the steel ball is going to sit right on that little hole in there where the needle fits in. Then I take my punch and a very small hammer. You'll notice how small this hammer is. It's just a real lightweight hammer. Put the punch down in here over that ball. Make sure the ball's in that hole and then I smack this thing a couple times with a hammer to seat that ball down in there. Obviously, you want to be sure that the ball isn't going to get stuck in the hole. So the ball has to be bigger than the hole. Then we got to get that ball out of there. And I think it's stuck in there a little bit. Let's see. There it come. So there's the ball out. I can use it again. Didn't hurt the ball any. Uh, particularly since I was using a a brass punch not a heat treated one so like I say I can't see a lot in that seat that's any different but I'll take it over and I'll show you what happens now when I test it in the water okay now we'll give this here carburetor a, a test here You can see how much it leaks if you just blow in a little bit. When you hold your finger over the needle, you can blow as hard as you want and it doesn't leak anything. And I'm not pushing on that needle very hard, just pushing on that little spring on the end there. So I'd say this carburetor is fixed. And that's all there is to it.